Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will discuss sexual reproduction in which area? Sexual reproduction in which area is oogamous type. In oogamous, male gamete is smaller in size and it is motile. While female gamete are larger in size and these are non-motile. Mostly, which area is monoecious in which male and female reproductive structures are formed on same thallus. But few species are also dioecious in which male and female reproductive structures are formed on separate thallus. In case of monoecious species, male reproductive structure and female reproductive structure may form on same filament or may form on different filament of same thallus. Male and female reproductive structure of Vocheria are called Anthridia and Ogonia. When they are formed on same filament, they are formed very close to each other. Let's understand sexual reproduction in which area by stepwise manner. First, we will talk about development of anthridia, that is male reproductive structure. So this is any thallus, uh, any filament of thallus, a small tubular outgrowth will arise. on this filament. So, this is small tubular outgrowth will arise on a filament and when this growth tubular outgrowth arises, now I am coming to the next step, this will increase, this tubular outgrowth will increase in size and Chromatophores, these green colored structures are chromatophore and this, these black colored structures are nuclei. And chromatophores and nuclei will migrate to this tubular structure. So, when this structure will grow in size, while it is growing, this chromatophores and nuclei will migrate to that structure and it will further increase and it will bend like a horn. It will bend like a horn. Now, when it grows to the maximum of its size, then there will be a septa formation. This is septa there will be a septa formation. This septa will separate all this filament from that region, that region. And this region now will be called anthridium. So, this region will be called anthridium. So, it have many nuclei, chromatophore and cytoplasm. Now, it's a cytoplasm will divide into small segments like this and each segment cytoplasm will divide into small segments and each segment have one nuclei, single nuclei. Ultimately, so its cytoplasm will divide into small segments like this and each segment have one nuclei. Now, each of that segment will form one male gamete and male gamete of this is called antherozoids. The antherozoid. And this male gamete will have two unequal flagella. So, this male gamete is bi, it will be like this, it will be biflagellated. It have two unequal flagella, one will be Viplas type, another will be tinsel type. So, it is biflagellated. <laughs> now, it is fully formed anthridia. So, this anthridia have Antherozoids, many antherozoids. Each antherozoid have a single nucleus and two flagella that are unequal. So this is development of anthridium. Now coming to Ugonia.
near to on the same filament near to anthridia a small outgrowth will arise this small outgrowth and in this small outgrowth there will be no chromatophores so here you can see that in that outgrowth green colored bodies are absent so this small outgrowth only have nuclei it have many nuclei so this outgrowth only have nuclei it is devoid of chromatophores so here chromatophores are absent in that small outgrowth and the name of this outgrowth is called is wanderplas a outgrowth that is formed during ugonial development and this outgrowth do not have chromatophores that's why it looks colorless and the name of this outgrowth is wanderplas now this outgrowth will increase in size and become rounded and it will for it will increase in size and become rounded and at the tip it forms aperture apical aperture so this is ugonia this will be called ugonia initially when it's the development of ugonia started a small outgrowth arises and it has only nuclei but when it will grow in size some chromatophores will also move from there so you can see there are chromatophores and when after moving chromatophores it will form a septa there so you can see there is a septum so now it is separated from rest of filament and it will increase in size it will form a aperture apical aperture so now we have two structure fully formed anthridia and fully formed ugonia both will open at the same time so here on the opening of anthridium biflagellate anthroids come out and they will swim in water at the same time some cytoplasm from this ugonia will come out or will oozes out through this aperture and it will here it form a drop so here it will form a drop some cytoplasm will come out and it form drop now these small anthrozoid by swimming when they will reach to that drop they will entangle there like this they will entangle in that mucilaginous drop and eventually they will come inside only one will reach and one will fuse <laughs> so when they come all these nuclei or before coming to these anthrozoids all these nuclei will degenerate except one you can see that it was multinuclear there were many nuclei but before fertilization all these nuclei will degenerate and only one remain functional so it will come it will lose its flagella and it will fuse so after fusing there will be a diploid nuclei and now it will be called zygote so on formation of zygote this zygote will secrete thick wall around itself it will secrete thick wall like this it will secrete thick wool and on decay after some time this filament will decay and it will be freed from that filament so this is now zygote on a returning favorable condition its wall will break and there will be a meiosis in this two n nuclei and there will be n nuclei these n nuclei further divide by mitosis and form many nucleus so this will germinate by protruding two filaments upper one and lower one so here in these two filaments one filament will form rhizoid 
and another will form thallus structure. So this is sexual reproduction in Butcheria. <laughs> to revise this, I am repeating it again. A small outgrowth, tubular outgrowth will arise from a filament and this will increase in size. While it is increasing in size, chromatophores and nuclei will migrate to this. Finally, it will bend like a horn. You can see that when it will bend like a horn, there will be a septa formation. This septa separates this structure from the rest of the filament. Now, this structure contains many nuclei and chromatophore and cytoplasm. So, its a cytoplasm divides into small segments and each segment have one nuclei. After division into uh, small segment, these small segment will form two flagella and they are now antherozoid and this structure is anthridium. So, antherozoid are biflagellated. There are two unequal flagella in that. Now, coming to Ugonia, <laughs> Near to this anthridia, a small outgrowth will arise and this small outgrowth is colorless because chromatophores are not there. Only nuclei are there but after some time chromatophore will also migrate to that area and it will increase in size and form a structure, rounded structure which have a aperture at its apical portion that is called ugonia. Now, it's it is multinucleate. So all its nuclei will degenerate except one. On maturation of both, both will open at the same time. So here from anthridia, antherozoids will liberate and they will swim in water. At the same time, this ogonia releases a, its cytoplasm through this aperture and it forms a drop on this aperture. While swimming, when they come and come in contact to that uh, trope, they will entangle there, and one will reach inside. It will lose its flagella and will fuse with the nucleus, and it forms zygote. Then this zygote secretes three to seven layer thick wall, and after decay of that filament, it will be freed from there. Now this is fully formed zygote, and it is multi-layered thick wall. On a returning of favorable condition, it will germinate and it will germinate by meiosis. And there will be two, out, two outgrowth from that zygote. One outgrowth forms an rhizoid and another forms thallus. So this is sexual reproduction in Buche.